Wait a minute. What? <sighs> That's better. Transitions between one section of your song and the next section is such a powerful way of making your track way more interesting to the listener. And having taught a lot of home studio producers through Producer Accelerator, I can tell you a lot of home producers are not doing this, but it is 100% what the pros do to make their tracks 10 times more interesting. What's up you guys, Nathan Larson here, back at you with another video for those of you guys who make music at home, whether you're an artist, songwriter, producer, if you write and record your own music at home, this is the channel for you. And listen, if that sounds like you at all, you need to subscribe to the channel right now. It's just right there, let's do it, come on. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you five transition tricks you can use right stinking now to instantly level up your productions. Oh, and uh, you're gonna wanna stick around till the end because number five is pure gold. Let's do it. All right, so we have the dot open and we're gonna go ahead and jump right into number one, and that is using reversed percussion. Now, before you're saying, yeah, 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 I know that, shh, shh, hold up a sec. Because even though this is just one trick, there are almost infinite ways of approaching this. I'm gonna show you a couple key things that you can take away right now. Let's start with the basics. So the very first thing that you're gonna do is, first of all, find a moment where it actually makes sense for there to be transitions. Typically, this is gonna be going into courses, getting out of courses, going into a verse, getting out of a verse. Basically, anytime you have one section going into the next section is where we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and start doing this. So let's go ahead and jump right into this moment before we go into a chorus. I'm gonna go ahead and mute out the vocals since the vocals on here are not finished. And by the way, I'm gonna be doing a deep dive in this track in another video, I actually produced this with Grammy-nominated producer Forrest Whitehead. All right, so we've got this moment where it's basically getting into a different section here. It's, uh, we're gonna do one bar leading in, but you'll see what happens here. So pretty simple, but then we kind of go into this little drop, if you will. So what we're gonna to wanna to do first and foremost is find a sound that we want to then reverse. All right, so let's just pull something up. I'm probably just literally gonna do something super, super, super simple. Typically, you're gonna to wanna to do snares, cymbals, and other things like that that have a little bit of a tail that you can then reverse and make sound really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and just find a snare. All right, so I'm gonna just use this thing here, and it's just pitch down. So I'm just gonna go ahead and there we go. So we've got this snare here. Let's just put it, let's just put it right on a bar, right on a beat here. And what we're gonna do first and foremost is bounce this down to audio. So if you are using MIDI, then you're gonna wanna bounce this down to audio. So I'm just gonna go bounce down, I call this rev snare, and this is what we get. We have this audio file like this. Pretty straightforward. So we're gonna just cut right at the beginning there, and then we are gonna grab this and reverse it. So in Logic, you just go to region, more, reverse, and then now this is what it'll sound like. There we go. We're gonna kind of cut off a little bit more there. Cool, let's just do it that way. And we are then going to place this where it makes the most sense, transitionally speaking. I'm also gonna kind of bump this down. So then we are gonna move this so that it basically lands right where everything happens on this beat. And so we'll just do it like right there. Let's see how this sounds. Okay, it's a little hot. We can turn that down. Now, the other thing that we can do here is we could add reverb on here if we wanted to have it kind of have a little bit of a throw afterwards. I'm just gonna use Realm, which is ROM from Native Instruments. It's a really good sounding one. So that'll sound like that. So that way what we're doing is kind of connecting everything together. And again, it's a little hot still, so turn that down. We wanna blend it in. You don't want it to be heard so much as felt. So right now, you don't necessarily hear it right at the front, but if I were to take it out, you can definitely tell. Now what I'm gonna do here is show you just a couple other things that you can do. The first thing is we've got this snare, right? So what if we instead didn't reverse this? Let's just go ahead and pull this to there. And let's go like this. Let's not reverse it, but let's still have this reverb. It's like that. Let's actually make this longer. Let's cut all that low stuff out. Bump the mix up. There we go. Now what we could do is bounce that again. We'll call this rev snare again. So basically what we're doing is we are actually printing down that reverb into the actual audio. So we're basically baking the reverb in. So now this audio file is gonna sound like this. And basically now what we can do is do the same thing, reverse it. Now the tail, which is now at the beginning, is going to sound a little different. Now we could add a fade there. There we go. So let's just kind of throw that in there. There we go. We can make that fade a little longer. 
Now I think I like that sound a little bit better. It seems to kind of just blend into things a little more. And then we could go ahead and do the same thing, add a reverb at the end there. Turn the mix down, delay down. Nice. Boom, there we go. Now if I want to reuse that, I can just take this and copy this into any other sections of the song that I want that to happen. There we go. Have it right there as well. Now that's just using a snare. We could also do the same idea with a cymbal. Let me just do this real fast. I'll actually go through all the work here real quick and just show you what this would sound like if you did something like a crash cymbal. So what I did is the exact same thing as before. I just took this crash and then I turned it into audio. So now we have this. Okay, now what I can do is actually duplicate this. This is just another idea for you and reverse that. And then now I will have this, so then I'll add a crossfade there. And you wanna make sure that if you have, if you're overlapping, you wanna have it set to crossfade on your drag. And it'll sound like this. And it'll probably need to adjust this as well. So here we go. This is what it would sound like. Let's sell this out. Okay, so obviously it sounds a little wonky with that crossfade there. Maybe we just take the top of that off and then just kind of crossfade. There we go. So now it'll sound like this. Let's meet that other reverse snare. So that way you get the swell up and then you also get the swell down. So as you can see, there are tons and tons and tons of different ways of doing this. And just because you think, oh, I can just reverse my percussion and then call it a day, there are other ways that you can take it a step further. That is number one. That brings us to number two. Two, using filters to open and close things or close and then open things leading into different sections. So a lot of times what you'll see is people doing this with white noise. So I'll just go ahead and show you that real quick. I'm just gonna use native instruments. Let's pull up reactor six. For me, I actually kind of like using Monarch for this. Okay, so this is what Monarch looks like. And really all we're gonna do is turn all of our oscillators off and the only thing we wanna have on is noise. Now, it doesn't really matter how it sounds in the end because ultimately we're gonna be using a filter. So basically all we need to do is just record some MIDI. So obviously right now it sounds pretty terrible, but then all we're gonna do is go into our EQ here. Again, doesn't really matter. We're gonna completely close this thing with the filter. And then we're gonna go ahead and open it up. And then we'll wanna make sure that that actually does end right on one. Now, what I'll do is turn my automation to latch mode. And it doesn't really matter how accurate I am on this because we can add it afterwards. Okay, so I just opened that up. Now, if we open up our automation, we're gonna wanna set that back to read. Let's make this nice and big. Go to the frequency there. We're gonna wanna end pretty high. So let's just kinda see what that sounds like. Okay, so that <laughs> need to get there a little uh, little later. All right, let's see if we can get this a little closer to what I want. And then we can do the kind of what we did earlier, which is for me personally, I don't use white noise a, a ton in my own productions, but this is definitely something that you're gonna see. We could then again do the same thing, put some reverb on there. Probably, probably turn that mix down. And again, you can get way more detailed in how you want to open up that filter and things like that. You can use different synthesizers for the white noise, or you can literally just go find white noise online, just drop in some audio into your DAW, and then use a filter to open it up. So with the filters, you can take this exact concept and use it in all sorts of different ways. It doesn't have to just be white noise, but the main concept here is you can automate the filter to open and close things. That's gonna help things sound much more fascinating and interesting getting from one section into the next, like you're revealing something and it definitely keeps your ear kind of, ah, what's next? What's next? That's kind of the main idea with these transitional moments. So that is number two, using filters. So let's go to number three, and that is using reversed, reverbed sounds. Reversed, reverb, yes. Reversed, reverbed ideas or <laughs> concepts. Now with this, what you would oftentimes do is actually do this with a vocal. So I'm just gonna show you kind of what we have. This is not completely edited and ready to go or anything, but let me show you kind of what we got vocally here. there's a line in here you don't wanna love me that that line you don't want to love you don't want to love me anymore so we're just gonna cut that let's duplicate this this whole you don't want to love me anymore and then what we're gonna do is essentially put a ton 
of reverb on here, and then we are going to reverse it. But you don't wanna love me anymore. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. You can either reverse it first and then add the reverb and then print it down, or you can add the reverb, then print it down. I'll show you both. You don't wanna love me okay, cool, so let's do that. We're gonna bounce this down to audio, and then now we have all this audio here. You don't wanna love me now what we can do is actually reverse this, and it'll sound like this. Boom, pretty legit, right? But we could, we could actually take this same thing, let's do it again, and you can kind of decide for yourself which one you like better. We're gonna reverse this first. Which obviously sounds pretty crazy. We'll go ahead and actually do the same thing with Realm, turn the mix way up, delay way up, size up. Let's do a low cut, here we go. Now, I actually really like doing this. This is really cool. And then we're gonna go ahead and bounce that. Okay, we got that, and then now we're gonna reverse that. So it's gonna sound not terribly different, but it is a little different. Versus. So for me, I like that a little better because since he had that higher note, it actually get a, you get a little bit more of that higher note in there. So where we can actually place this strategically for this to make sense, let's uh, ma like reverse that first one. Now, a lot of times what you do is you do this going into a vocal. You could also do it going into, we're just gonna cut this right here. Yeah, we could do it there. Let's see if we can't find a... Kind of cool to go into the felt it the way you made it. Felt it the way you said it. It's kind of cool, but this this is a little bit longer than we want. Felt it the way you said it. So that's transitioning kind of into that vocal, getting into it. It's a really cool effect. Um, we could obviously actually put it into where it stops right when the bridge starts as well. And this is where just making sure that you're choosing good places to actually put your transitional moments is gonna be, you know, a good thing to do. So it really closes pretty hard there. So what we could do is like I've done before is go ahead and add reverb on there to just allow it to kind of diffuse out a little bit more. There we go. Even more. That sounds pretty good. Boom, so that gets us into the bridge. So again, you can see those two different ways of doing that reversed reverb idea. Now you can do this with instruments as well. You could do it with piano, you could do it with guitars, synthesizers, whatever it may be that you want. I just demonstrate with the vocal here. But like I said, with a lot of these things, you can get really creative and try things out yourself. That brings us to number four, and that is using risers. So my personal favorite tool to use for risers is the plugin Rise and Hit. I'll actually pull it up here so you can see what it looks like. Now for me, I'm gonna be using the Complete Control plugin. That way I can actually pull up different risers and actually sample them or listen to them before I actually commit to pulling one up. And you don't have to use native instruments or rise and hit for this. You can find other risers. Logic, if you're using Logic, even has some risers built in. Though for me personally, I'm not a huge fan of the risers that Logic has built in. And you can even use live instruments with risers as well, like in this example here. And what that is, is actually using a live string player that I layered multiple times, just doing a glissando up the fretboard. She did tremolo, she just regular glissando and all sorts of things, layered that up through reverb in there, and it was absolutely ridiculous. And if you wanna see how I actually record those strings like that, I have an entire video on how to actually record uh, with only one string player. You can check that out up here or in the description down below. All right, so we're gonna go and find rise and hit. It's right here. And what we're gonna do is find some of these risers. We're gonna just do lifter. Okay, so those are a little bit crazier than I want. So let's maybe do something more like hybrid orchestra. Now, risers, lifters, just things that kind of raise or drop in pitch to kind of get you, that's kind of what we're talking about. So let's actually go to this last chorus is where I'm kind of thinking I want to put something. Yeah, something like that. I 
That could be kind of cool. Let's just try that, like why not? Let's see what we think about that. Now with rise and hit, you can pull this up and actually tell it how many bars you want that to last. So for me, I'm probably, not bars, beats. I'm probably just gonna do two beats. Let's actually do a count in here. One, two, three. Okay, so I get kind of messed that up, but that's gonna go on beat four. Oh, five, <laughs> five and six. Lols. Nice, that's pretty cool. And actually I had already done one in here using rise and hit, but I bounced it down to audio. You can listen to what that sounds like here. So that one has a little less of a lift and rise to it. But the main thing is finding these types of sounds that are gonna have some sort of a rise and swell and then a, maybe some sort of hit. You don't even need to have a hit. You could have it just drop and end, but some sort of a rise to just push us into the next section. So I'm gonna take all this stuff out. You can see here, I actually already have a reverse snare in here that I put. Okay, so we basically have three separate things that are getting into this moment. What if I were to mute all of this and just see what this sounds like? I mean, that's, but you take that and compare it to what we have here now. That's, that's 10 times more interesting for sure. It just makes that whole transition that much more fascinating to listen to. So get really creative with how you can find risers. You can even look online, find samples. You can use Splice, you can use Arcade. Um, obviously Rise and Hit is a good option. I know yeah, that's a plugin you'd have to buy but a lot of DAWs are gonna have built-in sounds, built sounds as well. Logic has their own built-in sounds that they do have some risers. Like I said, you might kinda of need to finagle a little bit to make them work. And that brings us to number five. This is the one that I think is gonna be a little bit unexpected for you guys. And that is using good arrangement to transition into each and every moment. So far what we've talked about are kind of these tips and tricks and kind of little hacks that you can do, but the best thing you can do to transition from one moment to the next is actually to straight up have great arrangement leading into every moment and using sounds that help bridge one moment to the next moment that you'll then continue to use in every single moment. And in this track here, we actually do this a couple different times. Let me demonstrate. So first of all, let me show you how it sounds going from, so first of all, let me show you how it sounds going from kind of this first chorus, then getting into the second verse. I'm gonna mute out some of these things that I have in here that are gonna help transition to get into this moment, but this is what it sounds like. You love me more. So we have this little instrumental going into it. So what am I supposed to say? Okay, so we already kind of hear, you've got that little reverse snare. We've got some other little sounds going on that are kind of transitioning. Those are the little kind of ear candy things that we can use to transition. But what I'm talking about is how could we use instruments, actual arrangement to help get us into the next section. And so what I did is I actually decided what if this bar leading up, I actually use some sounds that are kind of string-like sounds that are then gonna help us kind of push into this next moment, which will help the listener feel like, ah, we're going somewhere different, and ah, like, yeah, we're, like, we're, we're progressing through this thing, this is getting more interesting. So let me replay that, and this time I'm gonna show you what it actually sounds like with what I ended up putting into this. You don't love me Right here. So what am I supposed to say when it won't And then, so this is the sound that I used. It's very simple. It's not crazy. That's the thing is that this doesn't have to be complicated, but that one sound alone, listen to it again without it. And again, like I said, we've already got some of the reverse snare kind of thing going into there with a reverb on it. That sounds fine. But just to take it and elevate it one more step. So what am I supposed to say? When but it's not just about the transition, but it's also about the sounds that I then incorporate after that moment. Because these sounds that are happening in this track right here and right here, I've got this lo-fi piano filter and I got this Arcus Melody. That's the name of the plugin that I used. That's what the, here's just how those two things sound.
right? And so those kind of have sounds that are fitting within that character of that pulsing kind of string idea that I used. If we were to have that all out. So what am I supposed to say when it won't? Versus. So what am I supposed to say when it won't? It's literally two instruments. It's two tracks. That's all it takes. So a lot of people have this idea that doing this arrangement has to be super dense. There has to be so much stuff going on, right? That's not true. Sometimes it's as simple as just making sure that everything is cohesively working together. If you're going to find one sound that's going to transition you into the next moment, then make sure you use other sounds with that that actually fit the character of that. So I'm using these pizzicato strings. So I was like, well, that's great, but what if I actually use like something that sounds a little more like actual strings, not actual strings, but you know what I'm saying, something that has fits that characteristic, but will also help me just push this whole thing forward into kind of a new soundscape. And that's exactly what I did. And guys, it's it's three tracks. It's three tracks. That's that's it. And then I added a little bass. That's it. I lied. I said it was three tracks. You also have this noir piano. Which sounds so beautiful. So what am I supposed to say when it won't mean much? So there you go. And then we do it again, just again, using arrangement, sound selection, using actual sounds and tones and chords and notes to transition. We do this again going into the bridge. We have a whole bar there. So we have an entire bar there where we could have gone straight into this bridge. From this. Totally could have done that. But you know, what would be more interesting is what if we kind of cause a suspension of time and then use all these other sounds that we've already kind of heard before to transition us into that bridge to where that bridge actually sounds a little more like, ah, like we're, again, we're going somewhere new. So I did a very similar string there. I did this piano and this, uh, these two piano-ish sounds. Kind of giving some motion, and then you got those swollen strings. And I'm getting that pulsing by using this tool called the LFO tool. Oh my gosh, it's so good. And so then all that together. And boom, look at that. So the main thing here is that you want to use textures and sounds and different melodic and harmonic things that are actually going to push things forward, transitionally speaking. Now, truth is that tips and tricks are fantastic, but there's almost nothing that beats great arrangement, composition, and overall sound selection, which is a great way of leading me into telling you that if you have not checked out Producer Accelerator, you are missing out. It's my online music production program that covers every aspect of music production from beginning to end. What gear you need all the way through songwriting, production, Production, vocal production, arrangement, drum production, and even mixing. You can check that out down below or just going to theproducerexcelerator.com where you can also watch my free training on the seven keys to pro home studio productions to make sure you're focused on the right things. Now, if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos like these. Give it a like. Let me know in the comments what you think and we'll see you in the next one.